The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Friday edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour on October the 20th. We're looking at the Dow down 122 with 33,291. Let me just go through this step by step. So we are right here. We are short from for subscribers to my opening call, short from August the 1st. Uh, at the exact high of 35,679 that day we went short and we remain short the reason is in the bigger picture the evidence was implying that the nine period moving average was in the process of rolling over but it could take some time but I used another technique that I used which which actually included the uh, nine period, sorry, the on balance volume, this little blue line here, this on balance volume, plus other techniques using the DOG, the inverse, uh, plus the diamonds to see where we can get an inflection point for a reversal. And we've remained that way. At this particular low, actually, a couple of days just before the low, we bought a very aggressive, without changing the short term position, we bought an aggressive three times long. UDOW and we managed to ride it up took very nice profits and then I would said that this is the stop we want to take a profit with a raise stop and if today I said if it's before 10 20 I can't remember offhand if it was 10 10 or 10 20 we want to switch from the UDOW the moment is taken out we wonder if there's a little bounce in the SDOW three times short sorry if there's a dip we want to get out of that. We want to switch from the U Dow to the S Dow, which is the short Dow, three times short, which is where we are right now. And the reason being, there's a pattern that now I do have to look at it. Yeah, we're back. Okay. So, and w what I wanted to do is I want to do the pattern that I'm looking at. Now, I might be asking my, my single, my laptop here, which is <laughs> I'm doubling up screens. Plus, I've got my office um, desktop, which is what I always go to wherever I'm out of town, uh, active right now. And I didn't, I didn't close it down to refresh because I, everything was working just fine. So let me see if I can get this going here. Oh, I shouldn't do this. I'm going to try to do that. Uh oh. Um, all right, I'm just going to talk it out. So the pattern that I'm looking at is a pattern that we call the dreaded H. It's a lowercase h that comes down sharply and then arches over, takes out the left side low. And then it becomes a dreaded H because if it does that and for within two bars, doesn't matter whether it's a one minute bar or a monthly bar, within two bars, maybe three, it doesn't go back above, close back above the left side low, that can be quite serious. Well, it was right here. We went down to 32,846. As I said, we were long, aggressively long, a small position. We've got out of that and we've switched to the short position. Why? Because in the H pattern, it invariably fails at a peak A or a B. Look, yeah, it went to an A and then a B. Well, if it takes out that, in this case, the 200 period moving average, which it did three days ago and keeps coming down, and now you cross the nine period moving average cross back to negative, there could be an acceleration. And this right side either stalls and then it can be going to a lowercase h and goes to a lowercase m, second arch. Or it just comes straight down. Now, what I'd say to subscribers, and I won't be able to do my video, my uh, hour-long video for subscribers on the weekend, I, I, maybe Sunday night, I don't think so. Um, but I am going to just do, uh, type up a report that I'll send out hopefully tomorrow uh, morning sometime. Um, and that's going to say that what I was looking at, if we close ugly today, 
meaning we're minus 150. If we're 150 or more points at the close, and then over the weekend there's really negative news, and the um, overnight futures on Sunday night are very negative, there's a really good chance that Monday could be very, very ugly. Could it be a low, not the low, but really a, pr a pretty decent a low like we had before at 32,846 with actually a pretty decent rally um, of about uh, 2,000 points? I, I don't know, but it, it could be a series. We just might be looking at a series of lower highs and lower lows. Uh, we just don't know. But in the meantime, this is something very, at this particular point, I think we've got to respect that there's a chance that we could have a very ugly day today into Monday at least. And that's that's what we're trying to play for. Now, within that context, look at the S&P. The S&P is trading down. Uh, that's down 28 at 42.49. Uh, it's getting closer and closer to the 42.16 level, and that has to hold because if it takes it out, that's very negative. You can see the weekly chart. The S means that the um, nine period moving has, has gone underneath the 14 period moving average. That's not a good sign. Look at the QQQ. Where is it now? It is down sharper. It's down 2.10 at 357. Still don't see the weekly chart go to an S. Let's see if the futures are in Q. Why was it earlier? Oh, there it is. Now, the futures have indicated, but the day is young. The week is young. We have to wait until 4 o'clock today to see whether or not this. Then you've got all of them, key indicators, except for the SMHs with the uh, nine period moving average in the weekly chart crossing negative. You can see a very sharp move down um, in the this week in the red candle. But on a daily basis, we're only down 26 cents at 144.14. So there's always... There are always one or two participants who don't want to cooperate. So this is what we're looking at here. There's some strength in the semiconductors. Now, let's just quickly go through to gold. Gold is now up 20. Uh, this is a big move. We had a gold stock. Why on earth I decided to make the, the stop a little too tight? Uh, we got stopped out. We had a nice, uh, uh, very small gain, and then... We got stopped out yesterday. We took a little bit off, that is. And I should have added that, not subtracted it to the uh, stop that I had. And now that particular issue is doing very nicely. But it had such a spectacular move to the upside. I thought if it made a peak B, it would be a little bit deeper than it was. Oh, this is just telling us that finally the gold stocks are starting to catch up to gold itself. Let's look at the GDX. A lot of people involved in the GDX. Yep. Um, I think it did. So today's high is so far 30.06. That's where it is right now. And two days ago, the high was 30.07. So 30.08, it starts a leg B. This is all leg A in the GDX, the gold miners. So they playing catch up finally. Good. Now what we're looking at is silver. Silver didn't have as good a chart earlier this morning. <laughs> of course, now it does. In fact, it's already in leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology above the 200 period exponential moving average. Can I get that to type? I can. There it is. There's your uppercase C on the way up in the Chapman Wave methodology. It's always, there we go, uppercase. And yeah, that's a climb. And it's like very well. So silver actually is caught up to gold because it wasn't participating all that well. Weekly chart still needs a lot of work. And meantime, back at the range, the Dow is just here. As we go to the break, the Dow is down 175. I'll be right back. That's the time. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, everyone. We're back. Basil Chapman. I just think you should do this. A crude oil is up 69 and 75. Huh. That's a pretty decent bounce uh, from the low that was made. It's up in the higher range. This is just telling me that because of the Middle East conflagration, that crude oil is going to be there as uh, holding very well between probably between 80 and 94. And if it breaks above 94, that's something very serious. Let's just see what heating oil was doing. Heating oil was doing uh, pretty much the same thing. It's going to the Chapman Wave Falling Axe Formation inside track, uh, repellent zone. And that just says the whole area of 3.26 is going to be important uh, resistance it's at 318 right now so a question ca questions coming telephone i had i had a question the other day i, I almost sure I, it's just back in my mind now and I'm, I'm hoping i'm repeating it correctly and that was is it time to be looking at telephone as a, a telecom that can give the dividend, as you've discussed before, when you say you want capital gain and dividend. You don't want dividend with no capital gain, with the capital loss, because the huge capital that you put in, you don't want to see that disappear. Well, Telephone came out with earnings so, uh, something the other day, and it gapped up sharply. It's still up very nicely. It's up today, 3.8%, up 58 cents to 15.83. I'm not sure what this is all about. But all I can say is that the the... XLC, which is in the communications sector, is suggesting to me that there was buying going on for quite some time. Now it's sort of stalling. And if you look at VZ, a one-off thing is, is separate altogether. So VZ is showing a little bit of strength today. But if you look at the weekly and monthly charts, yes, it's nice to get something, especially a dividend stock at the bottom. So what I'm going to suggest is because of and CMS, CMS, M CSA, which is Comcast, 
uh, is not acting well at all. It was one of the leaders now, so the weekly charts down at the 200 period moving average after being the 47s is now at 43. It's not a big deal, but it did lose that upside momentum. So I'm so the question was on telephone at the time I said, you know, there is so much competition. I just don't see anything there. And that was right here. In fact, I think it was somewhere around here. There was a pop-up. I said, I don't see anything there. I would have to see if it tests the most recent low, which is in the 14s. I did not know that earnings were coming out, and they were really good. So this is what I'm going to suggest, uh, and I can't remember who it was. Sam, I think. I, I just I don't remember who asked me the question. So I'm going to suggest that at this point, Today is the test because of after the gap up yesterday, if it didn't go into the gap, but in fact broke out above the, the high of yesterday, that's really positive. So this is really difficult because if it's a dividend stock and you're buying it for the dividend, I don't want to say to you, go, get in here at 15.85. Uh, this is uh, probably um, since July. This would be the high since July, July or September. I mean, a four-month period. And now I'm saying to you, get in with a chance that it could pull back and fill the gap. That's a point. So this is very difficult for me. Because it's a dividend stock, I can't even say to you if it continues this way. And there are fund managers that will be looking for just this sort of thing. What's happening in this environment where we can try to find a little bit of safety, where we've got a, perhaps a dividend. And at the same time, with the dividend, we've got um, a price that's close to the multi-year low, in this case it would be telephone, I mean in, back in 2019-2020, this stock was uh, just about 30. So cut in half, right? So this is what I'm going to suggest. Because as an interim play, I, there's no way I want to say to you, you're buying a dividend stock, meaning you want to hold it for at least the next three months because you want to get the next dividend, right? To say, put it in and have a stop um, just you know, ten cents below, twenty cents below. When this is a longer term, so I'm going to say to you, to put your foot in the door at fifteen point eighty eight right now. Just a, kind of a nibble. That's not the position at all. That's not the, the, the position that you're even thinking of as a dividend stock. But what you really want to do is you start off here, and you have to see by today's Friday, obviously. So by next week, between Wednesday and Probably I'd like to say Thursday and Friday, but let's just say Wednesday and Thursday. If it hasn't even gone into the gap, or maybe just touched the gap if it's gone to, it's held about 15.12. Let's talk about it again, because if the market is going sharply low and we don't know yet, this is just, we're doing, this is, <laughs> we're trying to anticipate, anticipating with chart formation means that. You're not guessing, you're making a sophisticated guess. That's different to just plain guessing. So the sophisticated guess says, after being battered for so long, it's trying to form a base actually between 14, 50, and 13. So at 15, almost 16, you're going to be three, it's a 20% risk you're taking. For a dividend stock, it's not going to pay you that. So I'm just going to say at 1588, Put your foot in the door. Let's see what happens. And let's talk about it in, in another probably four, four sessions, three, four sessions. Okay, next question came in. Could I look at, let me go, uh, J&K, actually HYG, but I want to go to J&K. That's the junk bonds. Junk bonds are breaking the, breaking the uh, low, that horizontal area that it's been in for ages. J&K is the symbol. Spider, Bloomberg. Basically, junk bonds. Look, yes, your dreaded H, the H pattern in the, um, it's broken the shorter term weekly, but the longer term weekly and monthly says that 85, let me just get this exactly right, 85, no, it's 86.28. <clears throat> that's the most important low. And here you are at 88.09. That's, whew, that's 5%, another 5% lower. Yeah, this is not good for junk bonds to be doing this. And I don't want to take too much time now with bonds because I did the whole thing yesterday other than to say there's a question as to whether or not we're going to make some kind of bounce low in bonds over the next few sessions. Is that possibility? If we get, let me just see where the Dow is right now. 
if we get, it's probably come back a little bit. Yeah, 170. Um, well, let's just see how this plays out. This this arch formation says 32846. That's another 400, almost 400 points down in a couple of days. And today, and maybe Monday or Tuesday, usually lows, decent lows are made on a Friday or a Monday in the Dow. So I, I'm just watching this closely. In the meantime, back at the ranch, let me just do this. Uh, J and K, not, not a good sign at all, especially when you're talking about, uh, I believe these are corporate bonds. Now, the next question came in, could I look at uh, high-grade copper? High-grade copper, there it is. High-grade copper is down. Oops. High-grade copper is down quite sharply. It's down 0.03. When I say quite sharply, I mean the fact that the weekly chart just makes lower lows and lower highs. But it's actually holding above the, the low that was made just about uh, four sessions ago, and that was at 3.53. So, yeah, copper just says to me it's it's signaling that there is a weak, weak uh, international uh, um, eco economy. Let's go to wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry. Yeah, same sort of thing. Uh, wood is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. We'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Editions Hour, Dow's down 170. We'll be right back, and we'll be looking at Bitcoin. And WBA and Alta. I'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. 
Hello, so we're back. So we're looking at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is up 795 at 29,695. So as I was assessing this uh, yesterday, I was looking at it and I thought, you know, with the current, with the dollar as it is, with gold as it is, there's just a chance that you might see some action in Bitcoin. Let's see what happens today. Now you can see today there was a big spike to 30,465. <clears throat> so it's it's trading at 29,650. Uh, this is way off the high of the day, but the low was was down to 28,000. Yeah, 28,000. So I think it's in play. Uh, for the first time, but it's in play in a narrow range, and you can see the weekly chart, the 200 period moving average. It's like a full, it's like a like a sine wave, right? A fulcrum that says you can go up to the top, then you're coming back down, you're testing it, then you break to the bottom, then you're going to go to back to the top, then you can, come, and it just keeps wiggling away like this. But it has been making slightly high highs and slightly lower lows, so that means it's in a a range bound pattern so i would now not ignore uh, bitcoin and bef before i said i'm not interested in it until certain things happen and it could happen later in october maybe even november well here we are late october i think this is now becoming very interesting we have not got any position at all in this bitcoin let's see what g g uh, g b t c that's what we once had and we had really spectacular gains in this and we've not been in it for a year or two, GBTC uh, coming up. Anybody there waiting for data? There it is. Oh, just broke out to the upside, up at 23. Interesting because when it was down in the uh, in the under 10, I was thinking, should we do that again and just buy it and maybe hold it? Well, this is actually acting very nicely. Bitcoin Investment Trust. Yes, it's in play. Um, I'll do this because it's Technical Friday. Let me just do this. So this is the first. This is an A right here. A, B. Now you've got A, B, C1, C2. And then you go brand new A, B, C, C, oh, and you're in leg D. So, yes, it's in play. Um, I'm going to wait for some kind of a pullback, and then we're going to test to see. Uh, just check out all the tacticals because this breakout in the – look, here's the 200-period moving average in Bitcoin Investment Trust. In the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart, the 9 is very sharply above the 14. And it's been that way since it broke out back in early earlier this year, back in March. And this is almost like a, this could be a brand new A. Here's an A again, A. This is probably, I should check that out because if it's uh, not, it makes a difference. So here we go. Uh, 20.84, 20.85. Okay, so this is a leg E slash B right here. Actually, very nicely. Yes, I think it's in play. Finally, we've got Bitcoin in play, and I think it's because of the international currency and the conflagration going on. So let's just consider that that is something that I now need to look at a lot more. Uh, let's go back to um, – so that was the question about Bitcoin. Yes, so – what would you do? <laughs> that was really the question. Um, Bitcoin trading at – now, the person asked me, I wouldn't be surprised if you already have it. Let's do this. Let's look at it together. Give me a yell if it goes under 29,000, between 29,000 and 28,300 and just holds there. That could be the place because that is above the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart. But there is – the MACD hasn't crossed positive yet in the weekly and the stochastic is just improving. This could be early in the game if it's going to be moving to the upside. Next question came in is Alta. Alta is Alta Beauty. You remember we spoke about this. You said that in the real world, uh, the beauty products are usually the last to turn down. It's when people suddenly can't afford – you know, that extra luxury and they go for lower price. This is just my interpretation. Low price products. And we had that high in May of 560.60. And I said, well, we've got to be real careful. And it plummeted. And now look at this chart in the daily. This this is just a concerted effort. It says any bounce is probably going to have to retest the 370s. It's a 374 right now, up a dollar twenty one. 
and right under the 200 the 200 pin moving average when we were over there you didn't even want to look at the 200 pin moving average now it becomes it's a magnet line so yes I would just say as a trade for a little bit of a bounce, I want you to look at ELF as well because ELF is the really took over the lead and then it too took a, took a dive. Um, that That's a stock that went to 138, almost a straight line up, and then it came down and tested the 200 period moving average in the daily chart around about 95, and it's bounced, and it's now at 102, and it doesn't look good at all, and the weekly chart the nine period moving average has gone negative. So yeah, both of them, I would just say, even as a bounce, I just be real careful. They, they're just not doing the right thing. Next question that came in is the VIX index. So um, let me just do this here. So the VIX index, what I say is if it goes into the 20s, um, the VIX.x, there we go. If it goes into the 20s, and the Dow is down triple digits and the S&P is down over 50 points or more, now that's when you've got to be real careful. And it, if it happens on a weekend, that's even more important, going into the Friday close, because that means Monday has a chance to be uh, pretty good. So the question came in, the fact that it's in leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology uh, does that mean anything? So I've made a big deal about this for years and years, decades actually, that the volatility index is a, is a measurement of fear. So my waveform does not work. I, I put it in only because every single chart that moves in a Chapman wave is the waveform that never sleeps. So I like to look at it as to say, do your analysis, but it has a different connotation whatsoever. Look at this big spike up back in March when the market made a low, and it went right into the uh, weekly chart, went right to the resistance level, and then turned down. That turned out to be a peak C minus. And if you go back, look at this peak C right here with the coronavirus. This was the, the major low in 2020, up at 85.47. So the answer is, is it very clear? No. It has no correlation whatsoever other than I like to do it, and it does give me some kind of a guide. But I could have made this a peak C1, C2 double top, and now you've got your D. Um, but it doesn't matter. The fact is that the VIX index is saying at this particular point, it's had a whole week, well, four days really, of very big moves to the upside with higher highs and higher lows. And today is one of the smaller candles so far, but it's still – um, at 21.41, it did at 21.66. How it closes today is going to be really important. Let me just look. Well, it's based on the New York Stock Exchange options there. I'm just going to go to the S&P. I want to see how the S&P is faring right now. The S&P right now is down 33, almost at the low of the day. Yeah, this is this is what I'm fearing that we have a very ugly close possibility, and then we'll have to see what happens Monday. Monday could be. Maybe it's a turnaround session for at least another decent rally, but we'll see what happens. So, on to the big question. The answer is no, but it doesn't mean to say we aren't going to have to watch it very, very closely because it's up in the 21s. And I said, if it gets to the 20s, we've got to watch it on a closing basis. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger News is up. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Also, so also just keeps making solos and lower highs, sitting on the new, just under the 200-minute moving average. It says uh, 374 and 3, uh, three I'm just trying to get that. It's three, 380 is the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart. And if you're looking at uh, ELF, which is the one that really took over and then it joined Alta. Uh, I don't know what this is saying about the economy. It says that, you know, if, if um, these beauty products, uh, cosmetics are coming down sharply, that's something to respect. So this one says it's a, a little bit better pattern, but it maybe is early in the game and is following. But the two, it's at 102.12 and uh, 97 is the 200 period moving average that it has to hold. Um, and that's going to be very important. A question came in about, uh, oh, let me just see where it went to right here. Queb. So Queb is, I, if I remember correctly, this is uh, Crane Shares China I Internet. Uh, look, breaking to a new low. Here's the arch formation in the weekly chart. Not go a good sign. It just says that something's going on here that is really not positive. And that at 25 is a real good chance that if 24 support doesn't hold, it's going to become a big problem. I think FXI was the next thing. FXI is the China large cap ETF, also making a new low here. It's taken out the left side low of, I think it was May or June. It's going to the, oh my. And then it goes all the way down to the 21 area and it's trading at 25.22. So I'm just watching this very closely. As I said, we have enough issues here for stocks in the United States. I don't know if I want to move to, to China for a stock when, you know, or even an ETF when you've got, you know, problems here. So it doesn't look very good at all. And Neo was a question about uh, how low can it go? I, I don't really know how low it can go. Um, can it, because 772 is the – it's actually up three cents right now. Neo is a Chinese company. Uh, this is electric cars, electric vehicles, EVs. Uh, you know, if, if Tesla is starting to show the, this kind of weakness – it's down again today, down five. It went right through the 200 period moving average with that huge gap yesterday. 212 is the left side of the 18th. 
But once you make your peak D, and then you made this H pattern at a peak C minus, um, you, it's really imperative that you find some support very quickly because 196 is the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart. Question came in about, oh, I just missed it. Um, oh, Palantir. Now, I had been asked about this the other day, and I said it looked really good. It's acting very well, but it had made a peak D uh, back with the doji candle early in October and then followed the very next session with the silent doji candle, which says if you close deeply underneath it, you've got to be really careful. Well, that's the case. And now it's made this H, just dreaded H pattern. Remember, the H pattern looks like a lowercase h sharply down, arches over, makes that part of the H that, that says the left side low must hold, otherwise it goes much further down. And here it is at minus 92 at 16.14. And I, I believe I had said it's in a range and that I would not. Let's look at it again next week, this coming week. So just as well, because it's not acting all that well, volunteer technologies. But I do believe that when we make some kind of a bottom, this is a stock that needs to be on your list, at least to look at as a potential uh, for the upside. A uh, question came in uh, yesterday, and I couldn't get to it. Adobe, fantastic company, holding really well up near the highs, the recent highs, not all-time highs, which, uh, which was close to 700. Uh, it's trading down. Today, 15 at 540. It did get to a D, but that D, I had trouble with this because this is your starting point for the last move to the upside right here. And that was a low of, uh, I'm going to go to the 18th of August at 503.90. And the low that was made most recently was at 490, 490 what? Yeah, 498.70. So it took out that low. So technically, this should be A, B, and yet another C. And then it failed. So it's the second time it's failing at a peak C. Just rare to do that uh, close to all-time highs. But I'm going to respect that, and I'm going to say that Adobe, really, uh, every, everything you read about it says it's just a fabulous company. This is still a C, and we'll have to wait to see what happens. But it's a brand new C. It's got nothing to do with the left side high because that was taken out by this low, which starts everything fresh. And if you're looking at the weekly chart, I am going to be able to call that an F right there. Still, one of the stocks that, I, you know, just make a note of this. The stocks that have held really well in this particular phase right now are the stocks you want to be looking at when we finally make a decent low. So those are the questions I had. I just want you to check for a moment in the den because I think uh, there was, oh, there's one. There's a question was uh, CRWD. Okay, CRWD. CrowdStrike, let me see if I can find it right here, CRWD. This is in the cybersecurity area, <clears throat> made a new recovery high. So let's just go to this. So this is peak A, this is peak A right there. There's your A. Now, if it is a by a penny, we'll see what happens here. This is on the 8th, on the 9th of October, 185.25. Next day is 185.20. If you do enough of these, even though it's triple digits, you can tell that there's something you've got to be aware of. There's your B, there's your C, and I wouldn't be surprised if that just missed 190.36, 190.28. Yep, so there's your D. And as always, D is where you've got to be careful. D or E, D right there, plus sign, because we haven't got any confirmation yet that uh, this is a serious top. This was a peak E at 172.64. Brand new buy signal right there. Look, the MACD is turning down sharply. The, the line period moving average is over the 40 in the daily chart. Stochastic's at 83%, still very strong. Relative strength is gray line turning down. So the relative strength and the weekly just went to a leg D. And that's the reason why I'm saying that even stocks that have been absolutely fabulous, you got to, if they start giving these D's signals that say, be careful, I'm going to be careful. So within that context, you've got 
a red candle at leg D yesterday and a sharp gap down red candle today. All the technicals are still pretty good. So this is a work in progress. So this is crowd strike. And if you look at the cybersecurity um, ETF, so let's go to um, cybersecurity ETF. So that was bug or why am I saying, oh, hack. <laughs> I should know this. I have it written down every day. Hack, type it in over here, not there. There we go, hack. Um, oh, wow. The reason why we did not get into this is because it was too late to get into it. Now we got the sharp pullback. Um, still not looking too bad. Let me just give you the Dow as we're about to go to our final break. Okay. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. In this last segment, what I want to do is that I have a question about Marvell Technologies and Semiconductor. It's really one of, the, one of the terrific firms. Actually, most of them in the semiconductor firms, most of them are really very good. I mean, they've done their, they've been through some hard times and they've, you know, they get things right when they get it right. But right now, this stock looks like it's down. Uh, MRVL is trading at 49.64, down at 05. 
A couple of red candles pulling away from the 200 period moving average. There's this H that goes to an M pattern, taking it out uh, in the daily, the weekly charts. There's 47 is the 200 period moving average. It look, looks like it wants it. I just give it a chance and hold off. If you so, this is really important, and I'm just giving this is this is the scenario that I gave subscribers this morning. The reason why we switched from three times long, very short term, because we still short the Dow from the August the first high. Uh, we're staying that way for uh, – we're going to keep that way for a little while, longer still. Um, but we went three times long uh, in the recent rally, just before the rally, and we've taken profits. We just, we're out, and this morning I said, if such and such happens and then such and such happens, get out of the, S, uh, the um, three times long and switch to the three times short only because if the day closes ugly and the weekend is really bad – uh, news-wise, and Sunday night is just not good. Monday could be very, very ugly. So it's too late on Monday to get into these positions. You either have to do it now and you have to have a stop and just say that's the way it is. So we've, we've gone aggressive. We're still long-term short, uh, intermediate term, I should say, short the semiconductors. Also from August 1st or 2nd, two points off the all-time high. We remain short that. Marvell is in that second. So I'm just saying... Careful, watch the fixed index. If the fixed index closes on a weekly basis up near the highs, in other words, it's already at 20.63. If it, go, if it holds above 21.50 into the close, it's really important into the close. You've just got to be careful this weekend. That's all I'm saying. So have a wonderful, have, with that said, have a wonderful weekend. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes and great programming. Yeah, check out my opening call.